This video is a quick introduction to Linux CNC and how to use it to drive a single stepper motor using a parallel port. Linux CNC is a very flexible, configurable controller for a variety of different types of machines. The easiest way to get it is to download the live image. This installs Debian Linux, the necessary real-time extensions, and the Linux CNC applications. I'm going to use a parallel port to control my motor. There are more modern alternatives supported by Linux CNC, but it can be quite difficult to get a hold of the necessary hardware for those. This is a motherboard with a built-in parallel port. I picked this up from eBay for about £10 with the CPU. One problem with a motherboard like that is it will tend to be quite old. In fact, that one's about 12 years old, and that could be quite limiting. On other motherboards, a parallel port looks like this. It's a set of 25 or maybe 26 pins. Here it's marked print, it could be marked LPT, it could be marked parallel. If you did get a motherboard like this, then you can get a cable assembly like this, and that will bring the parallel port to the outside of your case. Another alternative is a PCIe or PCI parallel port expansion card. These are really cheap and could be used to add a parallel port to a more modern system or even to one of these existing systems if you needed more input or output pins. One thing that won't work well is a USB to parallel port adapter because we need to be able to raise signals on the parallel port in real time and USB is not a real time protocol. I'm going to use this one. The reason is it's got this fanless integrated CPU. I can fit this into a really small form factor. So this is all the hardware we're going to use. Uh, some of this is optional, but the important parts are your PC with uh, parallel port, uh, USB stick with Linux CNC, uh, DB25 or parallel port cable, a breakout board for the parallel port cable. This one's a really simple one that just takes each pin up to a screw terminal. You can get more complicated breakout boards. Maybe we'll cover those in another video, but for now we're just going to use this one. You'll also need a stepper motor, a compatible driver for the stepper motor, a DC power supply, and wires to connect everything up. You can either use solid wire, or if you're using flexible wire, add ferrules like this. That prevents the ends of the wires being frayed or damaged when they're put into these screw terminals. For troubleshooting, you might also want a multimeter, and you probably won't need a scope, but we're going to use one later just to look at the signals coming from the computer. The motor we're using is a NEMA 17 bipolar stepper. I'll put the specs up on the screen. The most important one for us right now is the rated current of 1.5 amps. The rated voltage can be derived from the rated current and the coil resistance of 2.7 ohms. So that's 1.5 amps times 2.7 ohms equals 4.05 volts. We're using a generic TB660 driver. You can often get these in bundles with compatible motors. We do have to configure the driver using this little set of switches and this table. And we do that to limit the amount of current that the driver can deliver to the motor to below or around the rated current of 1.5 amps. We can then provide any voltage in the driver's range and the driver will target a maximum of 1.5 amps to the coils. And in theory, since the coils have a resistance of 2.7 ohms, they will not receive more than the rated voltage of four volts. I'll pick the 1 amp setting because the nominal 1.5 amp setting has a peak current of 1.7 amps, which is slightly over the rated current. In practice, you can go a little bit over the rated current, but if you do go too high, you risk burning out the coils, and if you go too low, the motor will only run weakly, or maybe not at all. We can also pick the number of microsteps with the other set of switches. Without microstepping, the motor will turn 1.8 degrees with every step, and that's 360 divided by 1.8, is 200 and that's the number of steps per revolution. We can ask the driver to partially power the pair of coils to place the rotor between those steps and this driver apparently supports up to 6400 steps per revolution which sounds like it would let us position the rotor incredibly precisely. However this does come at a cost we need to generate a much higher step frequency to move at the same speed. I'm going to pick a sensible middle of the road value of 8 for now. Now I'm going to install Linux CNC to the computer. 
I'll show you the install process very sped up since it's mostly just picking default options. The only thing I would recommend that isn't obvious is to have the computer on a wired network if possible during the install. It will then detect mirrors for getting updates automatically. If you only have a wireless network it might work too, but it might fail to find drivers for the Wi-Fi hardware during the install. If it does you can just skip the network step and set up mirrors manually. Also if this is your first time installing Linux don't mess around trying to install it alongside your existing operating system. Just use a spare computer with a disk that you don't care about erasing. This took about 30 minutes on my hardware. I've condensed it to about a minute, so enjoy this slightly overdramatic Linux installation montage. We've just looked into the system for the first time. These are the Linux CNC applications. We'll come back to these later. First thing I'll do is install a tool that will let me test the parallel port interactively. So we'll just search for it. This is the one. And we'll just download these two files. And then we can run it like this. And we'll also want to look at this pinout diagram for the parallel port, particularly we want to know which pins are grounds, which pins are inputs, and which pins are outputs. I've got this wire connected to the computer and the other side connected to the parallel port breakout. I'm going to add a wire to one of the ground pins. This is pin 24. And then I'll connect this to the negative side of the multimeter. I'll put the multimeter into DC voltage mode. Now if I read one of the output pins, you should see it's in the millivolt range. So 81 millivolts, 77 millivolts. If I keep, keep the uh, probe on one of these pins, pin 1, and press the same button on the parallel port tester, you should see it go to between 2.5 and 5 volts. We're getting 3.3 volts. That's fine. If you don't get the voltage you expect, Make sure the parallel port is um, correctly screwed in. Really screw these down on both ends. Uh, if you used a cable assembly like we did, make sure it's in the right way around. Uh, make sure you've got good probe contact with the uh, terminals here. Um, also check BIOS to make sure the parallel port isn't disabled in BIOS. Uh, we'll check the inputs. If I take this wire connected to the ground and I touch it to any one of the input pins, this should be pin 10, you'll see on the uh, parallel port test of the same pin updates. If you don't have a multimeter to hand, take a wire, connect it from one of the output pins, it's pin 1. And we'll connect that to pin 10. Now the first thing you see is this will immediately update in the parallel port tester. It will match the, uh, the state of the pin. And if we click this, it will also match the state of the pin. I'm going to set up a milling machine configuration with a single axis just so I can test this stepper. Um, first thing I'm going to do is close the parallel port tester, close the program, press Ctrl C in the terminal or close the terminal. Uh, I'll go to this step configuration wizard and I'll create a new configuration. I'm going to set the units to millimeters. Uh, I'm not going to change anything here, but I'm going to take a note of the pins for X step and X direction. Not going to change anything here. 
And here, the only thing I'm going to do is set the same micro stepping value that I set on my driver. So I've got this test this axis button. I'm going to press this, and I can use this to jog the motor forwards or backwards. Before I set up the motors, I just want to look at the signals from the computer on the oscilloscopes to see what they look like. So I've got the probes connected to ground pins, I think that's 24 and 23. And I'll connect the probes themselves to the uh, step and direction pins for the x-axis. If I now use the x-axis test to jog, you'll see pulses on one of the channels, and you'll see direction on the other channel. So there's always a pulse sent, but the direction hold signal is different depending on whether you're jogging backwards or forwards. Now we know that everything's working properly, let's set up the motor. These motors have four wires coming out of them. It's got two coils inside, so one pair of wires is connected to the ends of one coil. If you're not sure which pair of wires is connected to which coil, there's a couple of ways you can check. Uh, I'm going to put my multimeter into a continuity mode and connect it to one of the wires, and then I'll connect it to any other wire. You see there's continuity? Those wires are the ends of one coil. If I try one of the other wires, you should see no continuity. If you don't have a multimeter to hand, if you try to turn the shaft of the motor, it should turn quite easily. If you connect and short out the wires that make up one coil, it becomes harder to turn. You can really feel that. It becomes even harder to turn if you short both of the coils together. Definitely, definitely feel that. Alright, so now we know which ends of the wires are the coils, we can connect them to the driver. It doesn't matter which pair you select, but the driver will have quite clear indications of uh, which wires should be one coil. We're also going to connect the logic signals. So we're going to connect the ground wires to um, pulse minus and to direction minus. We're going to connect the X direction and X step signals to the pulse and direction positive. We're going to ignore the enable pin for now. The enable pin has sort of backwards logic. If you uh, raise a signal, then it will um, disengage power from the motor. If you leave it unconnected, then it will power the motor, and that's what we want. So we're also going to connect cables to the power. We're going to put cable in for ground and a cable in for VCC. Now before we connect up the power supply, let's make sure it's outputting a sensible voltage. Okay, 12 volts, that's that's good, that's fine. That's within the range of the stepper driver, so I'm comfortable to connect that. So you'll straight away see the um, driver start to draw power. We're actually being um, current limited now, so let's relax the current limit a bit. Cool, so the, uh, the motor's now being held quite strongly. Right. It's taking a little bit more uh, current than we would maybe expect it to, but remember that this driver also needs some current. So now if I jog, you should expect to see the motor move. There we go, we're moving very fast. Let's bring the velocity down a bit. There we go. Perfect. Let's see how slow we can go and how precisely we can move the motor. I'm going to enter two millimeters a second. Okay, try one millimeter a second. Uh, let's see. So the motor's stopped now, and you can actually see why if you look on the power supply. We've got a current limiter on this power supply, and when it enforce, it's actually preventing us from getting sufficient current to move the motor at lower speeds. Um, I've taken the current limiter off. Now you can see we can go uh, one millimeter per second. We can go pretty slow. Let's go down to 0.1 millimeters a second. Let's uh, 
It's making a funny noise, but that's what we expect. That's a very low movement speed. So that's it. Um, make sure that your um, power supply has sufficient current, I suppose, is the, uh, the learning from that. Um, this one's a current limited supply. If, you've, if you're not using a current limited supply, your power supply might not actually have enough current to drive a sufficient number of step modes. Uh -huh. You can always change the uh, current setting here, of course, but then you'll see the same kind of uh, symptom of missed steps and poor movement of the, uh, the rotor if you don't provide enough current to the motor. Um, so we've done what we decided to do. We've done what we set out to do. We've uh, moved to single step motor using Linux CNC. Uh, this has been quite a process, um, but we're now in a good place to be able to do different things, do more things, have more motors, for example. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll do that in a, a video in the future.